Good morning, my YouTube family. Well, as you're probably going to hear, it's drizzling, raining here, but I'm still sitting outside. Call me crazy, but I don't mind when it rains. Well, when it rains a whole lot and floods now, yeah, I don't like that. But to me, it's beautiful outside. Even though it's raining, God's watering the trees and watering the grass and fresh air is going through. So, I want to do a little sharing with y'all. Hope I don't step on nobody's toes today, but, you know, sometimes that happens. So, I want to share with y'all today, and I want to also show y'all. Tina Massey sent me this book. I will sing with joy. Live each day in the glory of God's love. And I didn't have time to show it to y'all last night. And it's in large print because, you know, my eyes are bad. And I started reading it. And, oh, my goodness. It's like God wanted me to have this book so I could share it with you guys. So, thank you, Tina. So, what I'm going to read to y'all right now we're going to be reading several things, and the first thing is the value of friendship. Now, this is in Mark, in the Bible, you can look this up in Mark, chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. And it says, seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven, Mark 2 through 5. One of my favorite Bible stories about relationship is the one where the paralyzed man's four friends brought him to Jesus. It was impossible for him to get to Jesus by himself. There were no wheelchairs in Jesus' time, so the handicapped people had to rely on others to do everything for them. This paralyzed man was completely helpless, but that didn't put his friends off. They cared so much for him that they carried him on a mat to the house where Jesus was. But when they got there, they discovered that the place was crowded. There wasn't even space outside to put their friend down. They couldn't even get him close to Jesus. But they refused to give up. They'd made a hole in the roof of the house and lowered the paralyzed man on the mat right at Jesus' feet. I wonder what the owner had to say about that. Mark says that Jesus saw the faith of the four friends and he healed the man because of this. Because of the faith of those four friends, they didn't stop, they persevered because of their faith and their determination to get this paralyzed friend of theirs to Jesus, Jesus healed the paralyzed man. Nothing could stop these men from getting their friend to Jesus. And because of their care, Jesus healed the paralyzed man. What about you? What are you doing to bring your friends to Jesus? And right here it says, friends care about each other. There are friends who destroy each other. We see that here on YouTube. They're friends one day, they're fighting the next day. They're coming on YouTube, they're talking bad about this one. They're telling you, you can't be friends with her. If you're friends with me, you have to choose. Really? Friends who destroy each other. But a real friend sticks closer than a brother. This is in the Bible. Proverbs 18.24 Yesterday we read the story of the paralyzed man's four friends who wanted to get him to Jesus so badly that they left no stone unturned in the process. They firmly believed that Jesus could help their friend and Jesus saw their faith and rewarded them for it. But Jesus did not heal the paralyzed man immediately. He simply said to him that his sins were forgiven, something that is impossible to see. 
When we communicate with Jesus, the very first thing we become aware of is our sin. It is only when we have confessed our sins that we can really get to, to Jesus so that he can forgive our sins and touch us. We must confess with our mouth our sins. The spiritual well-being of your friend should also be important to you. It is easier to love others when you are alone than when you have to live among them and are confronted by their imperfections every day. Isn't that true? Guys, no one's perfect. Even friends, they get along because they don't live together. But when you spend a lot of time with somebody, you realize they're not perfect. This is why the writer of Proverbs says that friends can break you, yet friends are precious. They care about you and you care about them. Some are even closer to you than your own family. If you really care for your friends, it is your duty to pray for them and bring them to Jesus so that he can forgive their sins and heal them spiritually. And right here they have a prayer and it says, Lord, thank you for Christian friends who introduced me to you so that you can touch me and forgive my sins. Help me to do the same for my friends. Lord Jesus, I am sorry that I don't try hard enough to bring my friends to you. Help me to make every effort to share my faith with them and to pray for them. Guys, Jesus says in the Bible, if you are ashamed of him, he will be ashamed of you in front of the Father, God. If you can share your Target Halls and you can share your Michaels Halls and you can share your washi tape, like I do, because I do. <laughs> and you can share your craft room and it's beautiful and it's abundant and you're blessed. You're blessed with these beautiful craft rooms. My bedroom is my craft room. Tell my husband I needed to move the bed out because I needed more crafting room. He said, not going to happen. <laughs> but you're blessed. But you don't want to share Jesus. You don't want to share God. What's wrong with that picture? You afraid you're going to lose some subscribers? Is that what you're going to tell Jesus when you're in front of him on Judgment Day? Lord, I had 50,000 subscribers. If I mention your name, they're going to think I'm a holy roly. They're going to think I'm a Jesus freak. Really? Well, I would rather be a holy roly than a washi tape burning in hell. I said it. I said it, my friend. Yes, I did. You cannot be ashamed of God and be ashamed to share his love and his amazing grace to others. You cannot call yourself a true friend if you don't pray for your friends, if you don't share Jesus' love with them, and if you don't share the fact that Jesus died on the cross for their sins so that they can spend eternity in heaven with you and with Jesus. Woohoo! I don't want to be in your shoes on Judgment Day. Because God says, Jesus says, not me, Jesus, if you are ashamed of him, he is going to be ashamed of you. You don't have to answer to me. You don't have to send me hate emails. You don't have to do any of that. I'm not judging you. I'm not. Because I am not perfect. I cannot cast the first stone. I can only share God's word and what God says. If you want to get mad, don't get mad at me. Mm -mm. No, no, sister. No, no, brother. I'm not saying this. God is saying this. If you are ashamed of him, he will be ashamed of you. So, then we go to the Sarah Young book. Jesus is calling 
And in the Sarah Young book, it says, uh oh. Okay, here we go. It says, Come to me for rest and refreshment. The journey has been too much for you, and you are bone weary. Do not be ashamed of your exhaustion. Instead, see it as an opportunity for me to take charge of your life, for Jesus to take charge of your life. Remember that I can fit everything into a pattern for good, including the things you wish were different. Start with, with, with where you are at this point in time and space, accepting that this is where I intend you to be. You will get through today one step, one moment at a time. Your main responsibility is to remain attentive to me, letting me guide you through the many choices along your pathway. This sounds like an easy assignment, but it is not. Your desire to live in my presence goes against the grain of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Much of your weariness results from your constant battle against these opponents. However, you are on the path of my choosing. So do not give up. Hope in me, for you will again praise me for the help of my presence. This is Romans 8.28 and Psalms 42.11. God is telling us to come to him for rest and refreshment. The journey has been too much for you and you are bone weary. Do not be ashamed. God is telling us not to be ashamed. You don't have to be ashamed when you're tired and the burden is too heavy. It's just too heavy for you to carry. You don't have to be ashamed. You can go before God. If, if it's too hard for you to stand, then kneel. If you can't kneel and get back up, then sit and pray and give it to God. We have a few people that need prayers today, include, including my little boy Hunter. He's having um, a biopsy today at 3 o'clock, so if my prayer warriors would keep him in prayer today, and uh, me in prayer, because I'm mama, and I'm not, I'm not without sin, and I, I am worried, and I've been praying and praying, and I'm, whew, when you're a mother, it's hard not to worry, I'm giving it to God and putting it in God's hands, but um, he's my baby. And I also want to pay, pray for Nell Art Queen's friend who's in the hospital on life support and my aunt who is hospice is taking care of her. She can go at any time and for Beth Allen and for anyone else out there that is hurting. So if my prayer warriors would join in with me right now, I would appreciate it. Heavenly Father, I come to you today first and foremost with thanks, Lord. I want to thank you for everything you've done for me and my family. Lord, I want to thank you for loving us enough, sending your son to die on the cross for our sins so that we might be able to spend eternity in heaven with you. Lord, I want to thank you for your amazing grace and your forgiveness, Lord, for I'm merely a sinner. And Lord, I want to thank you for loving me enough, Lord God, that you would forgive me of my sins, Lord God. Come into my heart and save me, Lord God. Lord, I want to thank you, Lord God, for touching my life and for touching others. Lord, I want to pray for Beth Allen's friend, for Hunter, for Beth Allen, Lord God, for Nell Art Queen's friend, for my aunt, and for Hunter. Lord, I pray that you would touch them, Lord God, and fold them in your amazing love. Lord, I want to pray that you would release them from any pain and anguish and give them peace of mind, Lord God. Lord, I pray that your will would be done in these circumstances, Lord God. And Lord God, that your will would bring peace and comfort to their loved ones. Lord, I pray if anyone's hurting out there, Lord God, that you would just bring them peace right now. That you would touch them, Lord God. Let them feel your amazing love, Lord, so that they may know you and be a testimony to you. Lord, I give you all the praise and the glory right now. In Jesus' name, amen. 
I love you guys. My time is up. I'm giving you a hug. I love you. God loves you. Bye.